Hello, everyone, and welcome to week two of Musculoskeletal Unknown Case Series. This is a 23-year-old athlete complaining of right ankle pain. And usually when somebody has ankle pain, the first imaging study that one gets it are x-rays of the ankle. And typically, we get three views, an AP, an oblique, and a lateral view. Here, we're seeing an AP view, an anterior-posterior view of the right ankle. And the first thing we want to do is, since this athlete is complaining of ankle pain, we want to make sure that there's no fracture. And if you take a look, this bone here is the tibia. This here is the fibula. This is the Taylor dome. The talus articulates with the tibia here at the tibio-talar joint. And we can see part of the calcaneus, some of the cuboid, the tarsal bones, and then the metatarsal bones right here. And notice that we see no cortical break to suggest a fracture. And in fact, the alignment of the ankle is congruent. We often say that the ankle mortise is congruent, meaning the articulations between the distal tibia, the fibula, and the Taylor dome are aligned in a satisfactory anatomic alignment. But the finding that we do see in this image is this round area of subchondral lucency just under the medial Taylor dome. If I come and zoom in a little bit more, we can see more clearly this area of radiolucency along the medial Taylor dome. So that's the finding in this case. We may think that, you know, a very common scenario would be, could this represent a geode or a subchondral cyst in the setting of osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease? That would be a very common reason to have um, a subchondral lucency at a joint space. However, this patient is very young. It's a 23-year-old. It's an athlete. And other findings that suggest that this may not be osteoarthritis are the fact that usually in a joint pathologic process, we see findings on both sides of the joint. But we don't really see any subchondral cysts or any areas of degenerative joint disease on the tibial aspect of this joint, making degenerative joint disease much less likely in this case. We only see the subchondral lucency along the Taylor side of the tibio Taylor joint. And there are no other findings like, you know, osteophytes, joint space loss, subchondral sclerosis, other findings that suggest osteoarthritis in this case. Another reason you may have an area of radiolucency in the, at the end of a bone uh, could be the possibility of a tumor. Uh, for example, a chondroblastoma is a cartilage tumor, a tumor that produces cartilage that's seen, you know, at the end of bones, particularly along the epiphyses of long bones. Well, the talus isn't a long bone, number one. And number two, usually a chondroblastoma occurs when, uh, when the physes are still open, the growth plates are open. And here you can see the physes has closed. You can see this is the physeal scar here along the, along the distal tibia here. So making chondroblastoma much less likely. What this is, in fact, this is very classic in a 23-year-old who has, who's an athlete that's complaining of chronic pain. Uh, this represents nothing other than an osteochondral injury or an osteochondral defect. And an osteochondral injury, an osteochondral defect is exactly like its name implies, osteo for bone and chondral for cartilage. It's an injury to the underlying bone and cartilage here along the medial Taylor dome. And you may remember that cartilage in its simplest form is, you know, the, the, the joint is covered with hyaline cartilage that helps protect the joint and provides nutrients to the joint space. And, you know, when you have an injury like this, it's, a, it's an injury to the underlying cartilage and the bone. And this is usually seen when athletes exhibit chronic repetitive microtrauma. So for example, you know, athletes like basketball players that are constantly jumping on their ankles or, you know, runners, marathon runners that are constantly running, they can exhibit chronic repetitive microtrauma that results in this injury to uh, the underlying bone and the cartilage. And this, the talus, which is this bone right here, is a very common site for an osteochondral injury. It's not the, the most common site. In fact, the most common site in the body would be uh, the knee, the the lateral aspect of the medial femoral condyle in the knee, but the talus is a very common site and the capitellum in the elbow is another common site for an osteochondral injury. These are important injuries to document because they can be stable or unstable. And usually the way we identify them as being stable or unstable is by getting more advanced imaging like an MRI exam. And there are certain criteria 
that we look for to evaluate for instability. For example, if there's cystic change around the lesion on an MRI, or if there's fluid undercutting the defect on an MRI exam, those are signs of instability. And determining stability and instability is important because it's treated differently. Usually stable lesions are watched and are observed, whereas unstable lesions are treated with um, arthroscopy. So it's important for the orthopedic surgeon to know whether this osteochondral injury or osteochondral defect is stable or unstable. So this is a very nice example of what an OCD or an osteochondral defect or an osteochondral injury would look like. Um, this is, you know, is not super common, but is definitely seen in athletes or people that exhibit chronic repetitive microtrauma. So next time you see a subchondral lucency in the ankle in a young person, always think about an osteochondral injury. Thank you so much for your attention.